Thank you, Michel, for that uh, overview and for the introduction. Yes, I would like to welcome everybody and um, all the participants um, for today's webinar. Um, I'm very happy to be here and um, to simply talk a little bit about our topic of today, which will focus on communication and marketing. So what we have seen um, over the last years um, working with um, over uh, 190 clients is that communication marketing is, is quite an important task and um, a lot of organizations struggle with executing it properly. And what we want to talk uh, about today is how to plan a proper communication strategy. Um, we will talk about the elements of it, what, what kind of role they play, and why we actually should do this. Before we start, I'd just like to give you a, the overview. Um, I would like to just introduce Hype a little bit and a little bit um, also introduce myself to give you some information about, about myself and, um, and Hype Innovation. Um, following, um, I would like to introduce you to the um, needs that organizations have. So, in terms of communication marketing, in the context of reaching out to audiences, encouraging audiences to, to participate in innovation activities, what kind of um, motivation um, do you have as innovation managers or part of innovation teams to actually plan this properly and to execute this properly? So what is the purpose of communication marketing? Following to that, we will talk about the so-called maturity model that we have um, um, developed here at Hype. So um, what kind of um, aspects play a role when you want to reach out to audiences? Are audiences always the same? Should we think about who to reach out at which point in time? We will look um, into this um, in a detailed way in this uh, third chapter. Um, the fourth chapter will focus a little bit about questions to simply evaluate your communication culture. That is an important part of, of um, in the end, creating a communication strategy and maybe a communication plan to really understand what is working for you, um, what have you done in the past, and um, to simply create a strategy that really fits your environment and um, your workforce in the end. Last but not least, I hope that we will have a little bit of time at the end to um, get back to your questions. As Michel said, please ask any question. Um, throughout the go to meeting box and hopefully we have time to get back to them. In the end, if we don't have the time, as Michel said, we will provide answers via email. Very good. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of myself, um, as Michel said, I'm uh, the Director of Professional Services in the Middle East for Hype. That's actually um, a new division that we opened this year. So I'm currently located in Abu Dhabi and that's where I'm free, uh, speaking from right now. I've been working for more than six years now in the innovation management landscape. Um, working right now primarily in the Middle East, um, but I've been working um, also in Europe and in the United States with a lot of SMEs and also large organizations. I'm focusing right now on um, enterprise innovation consulting, so I'm, I'm trying to support um, organizations in structuring innovation programs properly. And part of that is the communication and marketing aspect. To give you a little bit of an overview of Hype, so who is Hype Innovation? Uh, maybe you've heard um, um, of us, maybe you are also working with us already. Just a brief overview, um, we have been founded in 2001 as a spin-off from Daimler back then. We're a company who is focusing 100% on innovation management, so it's our only business. We're not doing anything next to that. Our headquarters is in Bonn in Germany, but we have offices all over the world in the United States and, um, and, and elsewhere, like for example here in Abu Dhabi. Our products cover more or less the full life cycle of innovation, meaning um, capturing the uh, innovation strategy and the innovation plan that you hopefully create or have created, um, capturing ideas by um, audiences, internal and external audiences, going over to evaluating ideas, implementing ideas, and maybe in some cases even create business cases or um, even managing a project. And all of that is possible in, um, in Hype. Um, in the case that um, our solutions uh, don't support you fully and um, that you request additional functionalities, that's perfectly fine. Our software is adaptable to your needs. It actually evolves with you, as we say, um, and we can um, adapt it to your needs, um, current needs or future needs. But we're still uh, not a, a pure software provider. We, we um, call ourselves more a solution provider where the software aspect is a part of the offering that we have uh, for organizations that are interested in working with us. So the software piece is one element, and traditionally that, that was a strong element, but we've seen that nowadays a lot of organizations need 
support even outside of a platform. So we deliver um, the software, we deliver also the processes. We have been working for 14 years now in the business, working with, as I said, over 190 clients. So we have seen what works for organizations or what doesn't. We um, implement those solutions together with our clients. And as a relatively new element, we also support our clients in creating the right strategies, in executing innovation programs properly. And part of that is the communication and marketing piece. Good. That's so far um, um, for the introduction. I hope you get a glimpse of what we do and who um, I am. Let me then move over to our topic of today. So who is this webinar actually for? Who um, am I addressing here? Um, first of all, it's basically for everybody who's interested in running an innovation platform um, successfully. And especially for those people who want to launch a program soon. This could be maybe a new program or a program, a program that is getting readjusted. Um, especially for those people, this can be interesting today. The second group that um, hopefully will find some useful information here is the group of people who want to simply extend the success of existing um, innovation programs. Because communication marketing um, does not only play an important role when launching a program, but it is a task that has um, continuous effects on audiences and should therefore be um, planned and executed continuously over time. Good. So um, let's talk a little bit about why we do this. So I've te teased this a little bit in my introduction, but um, there are some aspects that play a role and that need to be understood to, to really um, plan and execute communication activities properly. So why is that so important for us? First of all, it's important because in the beginning, if you launch a platform or want to launch a platform, or even over time, you need to educate people. That's maybe the most basic element of marketing communication strategies. That simply people need to be aware of the fact that innovation is an important topic for, for the organization that they're working in. We have seen this many times that this sometimes is a challenge for, for um, organizations to continuously educate maybe people that join a company new or maybe in a situation where uh, mergers happen. Um, that this may, might sometimes um, not be in the focus anymore over time. So this is an important topic, um, something that you should um, keep in mind. It's about raising awareness, it's about making sure that everybody understands um, what is happening, what the innovation program is all about. So you have to explain the elements of, of your innovation um, program, what kind of targets do you want to achieve, and maybe how people can simply participate. So it's crucial to, uh, to um, give people the proper understanding of what kind of role they have in your initiative and um, how they can simply add value to not only the innovation program but to the organization. As I said, it's probably the most basic element but something that should be considered all, all over time. The second element, and um, th that is one that is uh, at least equally important, is simply creating a certain belief in the approach that you're taking. It is something that can really be a disruptive factor if people um, suddenly don't believe in, a, in an innovation program in the approach that you're uh, taking, um, people might stop participating. People might uh, uh, leave the platform, leave the whole program, opt out, out of it. And therefore, it is crucial to build the right confidence. And this can be done um, um, by simply demonstrating that there's a certain value in it. And we get to this later, how you can do this. Um, it is about giving people simply a voice and taking them seriously. Um, how we can do that, again, I will get back to this later. And people, and, and that is the best case scenario, people um, will participate if they simply believe that it is worth spending some time on it. So we all know that, and the same goes for Hype, of course, for our employees here, um, that um, everybody has a day job, everybody has, has um, tasks that he or she needs to complete. So for a lot of people, for a lot of employees, even for people outside of the organizations that um, are invited, for a lot of them, this is some extra time that they have to spend. And they will only do this if they believe in it, that this is worth, that there is value behind it, that they are taken seriously. That is a second piece of uh, why you know, um, communication marketing is so important for us. Um, third piece would be the um, information that you simply deliver to um, your audiences. And this becomes crucial because it is important for users of 
the platform for people that should opt in into your innovation programs. And it is crucial for them to understand not only how they can participate, but when they should participate. So for them it is, it is an important aspect to understand if they have the right knowledge to participate, if they should participate maybe um, only when they have the right knowledge, so not always in the same way. And it is, it is in your responsibility um, to simply deliver that, that kind of information. So to help the audiences to understand when they should participate. That is a crucial element. That is something that we have seen also working with our clients, that sometimes this can lead to wrong behaviors or a, a wrong way of participation. So we have seen this in a way that if you run, for example, a campaign and you don't describe it properly, um, people will simply submit the wrong ideas, the ideas that you're not looking for. So it's important to simply deliver the right level of information, the right level of detail here. And last but not least, um, it is about giving feedback. And giving feedback is important because people expect that from you. People expect that, expect that from the platform, maybe some automated feedback. People expect that from you as an innovation team. People expect that from the organization. So when you run certain initiatives, it is crucial that you give feedback um, on um, certain um, activities. We get to that later. There are different levels of feedback and um, different time frames when you should give a specific feedback. We will get to this in a, in, a, in a second. So it's about briefing the organization basically on initiatives and informing them whenever something happens, when there's progress. Maybe in some cases it makes even sense if there's no progress to give out feedback. So these are the four elements. To just show you some examples here, um, and as I said, this is of course a continuous element. This is something that all um, of you should continuously think about. It is not something that only makes um, sense when you launch a program, when you launch a platform, or when you prepare to launch a platform. All of those elements should, over the time of your um, innovation activities, should play a role and should continuously be evaluated. So getting to the examples. The first one would be on the education piece. Just uh, two examples here um, from, from clients um, of Hive. One is from an um, organization um, called uh, Wilo in Germany, or Wilo in German. Um, they have uh, done a tremendous um, marketing um, plan and executed it um, very successfully. One piece of it was um, creating um, flyers to explain the approach. So to explain why they're doing this and um, highlighting how the process works on the platform. So what happens when somebody submits an idea, through which steps uh, um, does an idea go through, what happens at each stage. And this is something that was handed out to people um, at the beginning of uh, simply rolling out the platform, but even later on. So this was something that was uh, continuously handed out to people. And um, it was very successful because people just simply have to look into this. In this case, it was um, a very fun way to do it because you can see you can fold this flyer more or less in several ways. And it caught uh, the attention of people. And it was a very, very successful way to simply um, um, transmit and um, the information that is necessary here. A second example that goes in the same direction, um, a company that we're working with here in Dubai, um, nearby to Abu Dhabi, is uh, Diwa. It's a government organization. And they basically did the same approach as Wilo. They um, tried to explain um, how the process works to um, everybody that uh, reads the flyer, basically. They handed them out to the whole organization when the system was launched, but also over time continuously. So um, at certain uh, um, areas of uh, the headquarter and the offices outside of the headquarter, there were simply those flyers lying around. You could always pick one up. And whenever um, certain initiatives were launched, then um, they tried again to reach out to um, their workforce to simply hand out those flyers. Very easy, um, something that is very helpful because it tells people what will happen with their contributions, with their ideas, and it is a very easy way to simply um, educate people here. The second aspect would be the belief part. Um, so this is a message um, that was um, sent out by one of our clients to actually the intranet platform, so to the readers of the intranet of, of this organization. And it was basically summarizing the result of one of their activities. Um, a campaign was one, and this organization called those campaigns jams. And basically, um, and what you can read here is that um, they were achieved some successes. As you can see, very high participation rate. And in this case, for that organization, it was a, a very high number of ideas. And it's basically just basically just a summer, uh, summary of, of the success 
of this campaign. This was, as I said, um, 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 put onto the internet. People could read it. The internet was, was read basically by every employee. And this um, achieved the effect that people, or, or continuously achieves the effect that people believe in the approach. They see, okay, something is happening. Um, my ideas really get um, looked at. Some ideas may, maybe get even implemented. Um, so um, sending out those success stories through, through one of those um, um, channels that are available, and we get to this uh, in a moment, what channels are available, is a very crucial element. Um, in, uh, installing this belief in the approach is, is very crucial. If you don't do this, people might jump off because they simply don't see that there's value in it. They don't see that something comes out of the whole innovation program. And it's a, a, simp it's a very simple task to conduct in the end. Third element uh, would be the information piece here. Um, as I um, said earlier, um, this um, becomes especially relevant if you create initiatives or if you create, in this case, a campaign. A campaign description has to be written in a certain way. A colleague of mine uh, did a webinar on this, uh, Mr. Zohn. You can um, just visit our YouTube channel and look at this. Um, just to give you two examples, if you see here a campaign description, you see those two um, sections in the middle, and they have a certain effect on people. So the first uh, chapter, just this one sentence, simply tells people that I, as a visitor of this campaign, should probably only participate if I have a certain understanding of product A in this case. So the campaign um, management is looking for enhancing um, a product here. And if I don't have any knowledge about this product, and if I um, maybe I'm not familiar with the product here, I probably should not participate. Unless, um, of course, maybe I can add value to ideas from my colleagues. So maybe I don't have knowledge about product A, but maybe I can put in a comment. But what it tells me as a, as a visitor is that I should participate in a specific way. So I, as a visitor, can, can probably analyze if I have the right knowledge or not, and I will probably go in a certain direction if it comes to my participation. The same effect has the second chapter here. Um, so here, um, the um, management of the campaign, basically the management team described that the sponsor of this campaign is looking for ideas that can only be implemented in a specific time and under a certain budget. And this again has a similar effect on visitors. They will simply um, evaluate their own ideas that they might have. And even if I know um, product A, even if I'm very familiar with product A, I still will think about those um, criteria here. So will my ideas meet those criteria or not? If they don't meet them, if I think, OK, this is probably an idea that might change product A radically, we will definitely need a long time to implement this and a long time to even create just a business case, I will probably not submit this idea. Because it is not um, the idea that this um, campaign or the sponsor of this campaign is looking for. So just by giving the right level of information, the right detail of information, you steer audiences in a specific direction. And this is something that you are actually looking for. Last but not least, um, if you come to feedback, this is an example from one of our clients where um, this client summarized the current status of currently running campaigns. So this is something that um, we always recommend. You shouldn't just give feedback at the end of a certain process or when, when a process has been um, uh, completed, but even throughout um, while ideas are being um, processed or while, in this case, campaigns are still running. So, this client summarized the status of campaigns. You can read here that he states that a certain amount of ideas have been um, already um, posted and that campaigns are still open and that um, uh, the cam campaign management here is requesting additional participation. This is just an email in this case, but this has a, a, a high impact on, on the audiences of those campaigns because they will probably read those emails. They probably come from um, a manager in the organization. And just by getting this update, they will understand, OK, my colleagues are participating. Something is happening in those campaigns. I should probably uh, look at those campaigns again. Maybe I have an additional idea. Maybe I can drop here and there a comment or a vote. So this motivates me as an employee. So all those elements, they play an important role. These are the reasons why we should focus on communication and marketing. Great. So let's continue with the second chapter here. So. Um, we have now talked about why we really want to do this. What is the purpose of communication and marketing activities? What kind of effects are we looking for? So the second, um, sorry, the third chapter here is now talking about 
um, how to analyze when to really um, uh, launch those communication activities. Um, and um, we want to talk a little bit about which audiences we should reach out at which point in time. So we at Hybrid have developed the so-called maturity model here and basically it allows you to simply analyze in which maturity level you are in. And um, if we think about um, innovation maturity, we basically have four levels here. The first one would be um, obviously if you start a program then you are in a very, very early phase. Usually this happens when um, you want to try to establish a relatively new program. So you maybe haven't done anything in, in relation to innovation in the past, or maybe you have done this on a very, very low level, meaning you have done this maybe through Excel files or through manual work, people could send you emails or something. So there was no structured approach. And this is the first structured approach. Um, what happens is that usually a lot of people or maybe everybody in the organization is not aware that an innovation program exists. So um, People are not aware, they don't know what, um, what uh, um, will happen in the future. Um, and one of the targets is probably to raise awareness here. This is one of the most crucial um, aspects of, of this maturity phase here. Simply to, as we said, educate people to inform them about the fact that something is going to happen or something is happening right now and to simply explain your approach and to explain um, how people can participate. What we have also seen is that usually at this point in time, um, a lot of the management um, levels are not involved, especially senior management. Um, that depends a little bit on the organization. Um, sometimes organizations launch a platform with full support. We have seen that this is actually often um, quite difficult to achieve because um, this is a relatively new program for you. Maybe you want to do this on a large scale. Senior management still doesn't believe maybe in the approach. They still haven't seen that innovation can deliver a certain benefit to the success of the organization. So usually they are at least skeptical and um, in, in a lot of cases that we have seen are sometimes even not aware that, that um, this will be launched. The second phase um, would be after actually launching a program. So you have um, launched a platform or maybe relaunched in some cases or you take the first structured approach and then after you've done this um, what you want to do is you want to create a certain momentum. So what has happened in the platform is often that um, maybe some ideas have been um, um, uh, submitted, maybe those ideas have been um, processed in, in very early stages of the idea process. So some activities have happened, but you simply haven't um, achieved any value at the moment, any success at the moment. Um, what we have often seen is that at this point in time, um, you see some level of participation, but usually from a, a relatively small number of people. So um, it might be that a lot of people are aware, but um, usually just a limited um, number of people um, are participating right now. Um, the other um, impact would be that management is sometimes engaged at this point and supportive, but only part of it. So at this point in time, you might have maybe launched a campaign or maybe even uh, two or three campaigns. So maybe you have gotten um, pieces of the management on board they um, uh, um, have been convinced that this makes sense and maybe they already have seen this by, by seeing that um, there is already some participation on the platform. But there's still maybe some resistance from other pieces of the management, maybe from higher management only and uh, lower level management is involved. So creating momentum would be the second phase and the second uh, step for you after um, launching a platform. The third phase would be to simply engage wider ranges of, of your audience. So at this point, after you've launched it, after you've, after you've created a certain buzz among, among your uh, workforce, after you've seen that um, uh, people are starting to participate, after you've seen that some activity is happening, um, you simply want to um, extend your reach here. So um, now probably um, the majority of your audiences um, are involved. So what happens is that at this point um, you want a large share, a majority of, of people to simply participate in any kind of way. The participation rates are usually pretty high um, in comparison to, to, to the stage before. A lot of the managers at this point usually are aware because it might be that you already have implemented ideas or some campaigns have been closed. So, uh, the first uh, value has been delivered to the organization and with those kinds of success stories you can uh, very easily convince managers to, to uh, jump on. So at this point, usually um, a larger piece of, of the management um, is on board. 
and it has been accepted as a uh, as an approach as a way of of um, delivering value for the individual manager. So um, you um, if if you put yourself in the position of a manager, so for you even if this makes maybe um, sense to to somebody in the higher level management, if you are on a uh, on a lower level. You might not believe that it is the right approach for you, but if your colleague, maybe if you are a department head and uh, the department head next to you um, has run a successful campaign, this will motivate you to simply step into this because it has delivered some value for him and why shouldn't it deliver value for you? So this has been accepted at this point in time as a successful way of um, addressing problems, current challenges, current maybe opportunities that uh, you want to harness. Last but not least, um, this is a very successful stage. We have seen um, just uh, the, the, the most experienced companies reaching that level. Basically what happens here is that um, this has been accepted by all employees, by the whole workforce, maybe even to a larger group externally as a way of really um, sharing knowledge and um, communicating with, with your colleagues and maybe adding value to the organization. At this point in time, probably the senior management is uh, um, fully on board or the majority of the senior management is on board and at this point in time it makes then sense to probably launch really strategic initiatives. So what we have seen is that a lot of organizations in the phases before they look at tactical um, activities, meaning maybe activities on, on a departmental level, maybe on a level of, um, of a business or a unit. At this point in time when you have reached that kind of maturity you can definitely tackle strategic targets targets that don't only um, tackle current challenges and opportunities but are looking for uh, maybe changing the business model for the future or, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, or tackling strategic targets that have an impact in the future, in the near term future or in the long term future. So these are basically those four um, stages and it's, um, maybe that's a question for you to simply um, analyze where are you right now here. So uh, in which uh, um, phase would you see yourself in? Um, as I said, uh, the, the one on the right, that is um, something that we have seen only the, 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 the most experienced organizations reach that level. Now, if, if we come back to our initial um, idea of, of communication and marketing, the question is how do we tackle now um, communication and marketing activities or how we execute them? Um, and if we look at communication and marketing activities, basically we can categorize them into two areas. There are top-down um, initiatives or activities and there are bottom-up initiatives. And top-down initiatives, they are characterized by certain attributes. The first one would be that they are usually initiated from the top. This is something that um, um, probably um, is very familiar to you. Maybe you've seen this in context um, of other bus um, enterprise business programs that communication activities that um, come really from the senior management, executive management, or simply reaching out and the whole organization. So they're coming from the top, they have the support of the senior management. Um, they are usually um, um, executed from a centralized entity. So this could be the, uh, the centralized marketing or communication department. And they are usually um, um, planned, executed, and analyzed from the, from the central entity. Um, those initiatives um, are usually purpose-led. It means that um, we are looking here at elements related to the corporate strategy maybe, or um, elements that are looking for um, 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 elements that are um, um, have an impact in the future. This could be the near-term future or the long-term future. So they are really led by a purpose um, that stands behind them. And last but not least, they're usually very objective in their nature and in their, in their, in their, uh, um, um, in their language, meaning that um, usually because uh, those um, activities are um, reaching everybody in the organization because you try to um, um, have somebody from management standing behind this, you usually have a very objective tone in them and they're usually uh, focusing a lot on facts and information. On the other side, bottom-up activities, they are often um, initi initiated by other elements of the, of the management and usually they come very often from lower levels. But of course, um, if you as a senior manager, um, if you are um, heading one piece of the organization, then of course this could be interesting for you too. Um, you get support from specific dedicated sponsors. These could be the managers themselves. These could be maybe subject matter experts in those divisions or departments. So there's somebody standing behind it who has not necessarily um, um, to be a manager or um, be the, the, the head of this department where, where this is initiated in. Um, 
this is something that is very interesting. Um, you usually think about um, um, the effect that those initiatives ach uh, achieve. And in contrast to a centralized activity that is uh, reaching every, everybody where you more or less make sure that everybody um, will get the information, here you often rely on peer-to-peer -peer recommendation or peer-to-peer -peer activities. So these are usually maybe not emails that go out to everybody, but maybe just um, activities for, for a certain group of people. And then you hope that uh, through viral um, effects, through peer-to-peer -peer recommendation, that people get aware of that, that people really spread the information here um, by simply talking to their peers, to their colleagues, to their office neighbors, and so on and so on. They are focusing a lot on the, the, a certain demand that is available right now. A typical example would be a current challenge that is um, um, uh, simply a, a topic now on, on the desk of somebody. And, and this could be um, a, a topic that is only um, reaching out or um, we take this topic and reach only up to a portion of um, um, a certain division or a certain department. So the demand is here in focus. And last but not least, as I said, the viral aspects play a role here. Those activities are often very creative. Um, um, of course, facts and information play a role, but they are, you don't focus on them here. They are part of your, um, uh, of your planning process uh, for those activities. So the viral aspects play a role here. And again, the, the, right, the question is always, what is the right approach, approach for you? Um, there is no single correct answer here. So um, we cannot say that the top-down approach is always needed in a certain scenario or um, for a certain company profile. And the same goes for the bottom-up bottom um, scenario. So the question is, how do we get to a certain approach that fits our needs and our environment? And what you basically should do is, is look, first of all, at communication channels. And the question is always, what kind of communication channels should we use? What kind of communication channels are available uh, are available to us? And um, what you see here is just basically a list of a lot of um, channels. Some of them are uh, uh, not being displayed here. But um, it, what, what I want to say here is that it is not so important to um, really um, understand what communication channels maybe other organizations use. It is really important that you understand what channels are available for you and what is working for you. So what I want to do is um, I don't want to focus here on simply stating just um, channels that are generally used. I just want to give you examples here. And these are two examples that I picked. The newsletters, um, something probably you are all familiar with, and success stories. And as I talked about them, this, these, uh, this is one channel that, that can be used and should be used probably. Um, there are many, many more. And really it depends on your organization which, which channels are available. We get to that in, a, um, in the next chapter, how to analyze this. So if we take all the channels that are available, we can simply categorize them now. So we can say, okay, there are top-down channels and there are bottom-up channels. Some work um, in the context of, um, of, of the top-down um, approach, some work in the context of the bottom-up approach. And the question is, what kind of effects do they, do they have here? So if we take our two examples here, the success stories and the newsletters, the success stories, as we said, build believe in the process. They um, simply... Uh, um, convince users that this approach makes sense, that this adds value to, to the organization. The newsletters, um, on the other hand, they simply often show success um, and they simply highlight maybe other users. So if um, certain people have achieved certain um, successes or maybe a certain sponsors have um, achieved um, certain successes or maybe simply certain initiatives have been um, planned and executed, this could be a part of the newsletters that you send out. One example that we saw um, was, was an, uh, a letter that was in the intranet from, from the, uh, this organization. This could be something that you could look for. And all the channels that we, we try to um, involve into our communication planning, all of them have a specific um, target and all of them have a specific outcome. And this is something that you should keep in mind. So the question would be then, what kind of um, channels should I use and what kind of channels make sense for me? Well, that depends a little bit on, um, on your maturity and it depends a little bit where you are right now. So if we look back um, um, on, on innovation programs and see what um, you and your colleagues are uh, doing on day to day, then typically it's, it's about those five steps here. It's about launching the program, it's about maybe launching a campaign, maybe a campaign is running, and maybe then at the end, of course, the campaign gets closed. And then it's about ongoing news that, that play a role over, um, all over the time. 
And what you see here, and, and that is the important part here, is that you should create this kind of structure, this, this kind of plan for you, um, basically to analyze what kind of channel, uh, uh, channels are available for me and when should I use which channel. This is something that is really unique to every organization. This is something that we do with our clients in our workshops that we do with our clients where we sit together, analyze the, the um, communication and marketing behaviors of the past and activities of the past and then together with our clients create a plan like this. This is something but that, that you can also do for yourself. Um, try to create a plan like this to analyze what kind of channels are available and to really analyze what kind of benefits do they deliver and when should I look for which kind of benefits. So this is crucial to simply um, take a look at all the channels and really um, position them properly in your innovation program. Now we have talked about the channels, we have talked about a, a plan for channels. Um, now, one, when should you try to target which kind of audience with, with those channels? That is a question that is basically the, the, the next step in your planning process. So, um, you have looked at the channels, you have created this uh, channel plan, and then it becomes important to understand at which point in time should I use the channels. So, as I said, there's no single answer here. There's no one channel that you should use. It's always a combination of channels. Um, this will look different for each organization uh, depending on, on the maturity of your program and um, this is something that you should really also uh, um, talk to your um, internal communication department. So they probably have experience um, not only in context of innovation but in context of um, other initiatives that are running in your organization. So that you should use the feedback that you get there. The, the typical channels that high clients use and I would just give you the top three here, are the following ones. First of all, posters and advertisements, something that is probably um, not new to you, something that basically all of our clients do. The second um, important or the second most used one, would I say, is the, um, um, the placement of um, um, news about new campaigns that are being launched in the corporate internet. So the internet is usually um, um, in focus if it comes to, to um, market activities because it is usually the platform that the majority of people visit uh, most often uh, day to day. And last but not least, um, if you could position a message from your top um, management, maybe if that is an option, the CEO, this is something that um, is very often used by clients. This does not mean that this, these three channels should be part of all of your um, communication planning, but it just shows you um, that high clients um, use them very frequently. But as I said, um, you have to analyze if, if they achieve the effect that you're looking for in your innovation program. Now, getting back to um, the audience and to the time frames, so when should you communicate to people and to whom should you communicate in the end? First of all, if it comes to the first level, it's basically marketing the program. And this is something um, we talked about in, um, earlier uh, today where we s said if you really um, position a program, if you launch a program, if you relaunch a program, probably you um, spend a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of activities will happen in the beginning. So this is something that usually in a, in a standard scenario um, um, has a, a high intensity level at the beginning, but it uh, decreases over time because when you step over to uh, a higher maturity levels, this becomes less and less important for you. Um, as we saw, um, if you get to the um, uh, higher maturity levels, more and more people will probably jump on board, more and more people will be educated, more and more people are aware that the program exists and how they can participate. So usually this is an initial um, push as we call it and um, maybe over time you just send out some reminders. We have seen that sometimes organizations do it differently. This is uh, not a plan that works for everybody, but um, again, as I said, this is something that you have to analyze for yourself. Typically what happens um, as a second level would be to give out um, information. As we saw in the beginning, this is one of, of the needs to uh, simply inform people about um, uh, certain activities, certain um, uh, successes, and this is something that usually happens on a, a, a regular basis. The, the uh, really um, example that is um, very common among high um, employee, um, um, clients is the quarterly newsletter where you every quarter at the end of the quarter probably or at the beginning of the next quarter you simply, uh, you simply um, um, write down what has, has been achieved and what are basically um, news uh, that are relevant for everybody. This is something that you typically, typically do with the same intensity level over a certain um, 
period of time. The next level would be the campaign level. And in contrast to the first two uh, levels, this is something that um, is really um, addressing specific parts of your audience. So in this case, it will be probably um, people that are getting invited to your campaign. So not necessarily everybody has to be um, informed that a certain campaign has been launched or that certain successes have been achieved during the campaign or at the end of the campaign. But this is probably only relevant for people that have been invited. And the audience selection here plays a key role. Um, we have, we have um, uh, done a webinar on this, um, how to um, plan campaigns properly. Um, you can um, just look it up in our YouTube channel. Um, this becomes really crucial. Usually the sponsor knows which kind of audience uh, makes sense for him or her. Um, this should be issued, by the way, by the sponsor, um, because this is a certain effect. It's not coming from the system, it's not coming from the platform. Um, so people will probably read this. And as you see in the diagram here, the intensity levels, they vary. Um, it depends on the nature of the campaign, it depends on the running time of the campaign, it depends on the successes that have been achieved. Um, if, uh, just to give you one example, um, an example that we have seen um, a couple of times, if you run a campaign and you don't get the results that you're looking for, you can analyze this pretty early while the campaign is running. Then you should send out relatively soon um, a notification or an email or um, use the channel that is appropriate for this campaign or the channels. Um, and simply state that um, you're happy about the participation, but you're not, um, uh, you, you haven't achieved right now the ideas that you are really looking for. You're looking for something that um, that goes in a specific direction. You explain this maybe in those um, in, in the marketing activities you launch, and you hope that people then will readjust their participation to and submit the right um, ideas you're actually looking for. So this is an interesting part, and the last level is basically the level of ideas. Um, this again has something to do with uh, just um, a, a piece of your audience. Um, in this case, it will be primarily addressing the submitters of ideas. And you basically just inform them about process, uh, progress on their ideas. The typical example would be if the evaluation has happened, if their ideas get declined, or if their ideas will actually be implemented now. This is an important notification for uh, submitters. They should definitely receive this um, at this point in time. Good, so we have talked about um, um, uh, the maturity model here. We have seen which maturity phases um, usually organizations and especially innovation programs go through. We've talked about um, um, uh, communication channels, which channels um, um, are appropriate for us. We've talked about uh, top-down channels and bottom-up channels. We've talked about planning this properly um, in, a, in a communication marketing plan that involves all channels that are relevant for you. And we've talked about when to communicate and especially to whom at which point in time. So let's move on to the last chapter. How can you actually analyze which are the right channels for you? Um, we've talked about communication channels. They are pretty important. You should be aware of, of uh, what are the right channels for you and what you can really use here. So I would like to give you just a couple of questions in your hand that help you um, to simply understand what has uh, uh, maybe worked in the past and what is working now for us. So we should consider here five levels that are important for us. The first one would be, um, thinking about simply what is our organization doing in terms of communication if it comes to maybe launch new programs, generally speaking, not only in the context of innovation. Um, if major changes happen in the organization, how, they are, how are they communicated? The second level would be talking about maybe existing enterprise programs and what happens if those programs change? So how do we communicate internally? Um, is that something that um, uh, uh, um, works successfully and if yes, how, uh, how can we incorporate this? Third level would be on tactical activities. So what happens on the level of uh, business units, maybe on department or section, um, uh, uh, on the department section level. So we should look at how those um, sections of our organization communicate and what culture is, is, is working for those um, fractions of our organization. Maybe, maybe we have different kind of communication cultures in the organization. If that is the case, then we have to address that. We have to make sure that if we use specific channels, that they either work for the right audiences, or if we uh, can make sure that they work for everybody, that, th that we really execute them um, for everybody in the proper way. So that is an important aspect here, really focusing also on the fractions, on the pieces, on the sections of our organization, and to look really into them and to analyze what kind of communication, culture, and behavior they have. Fourth level would be simply personal um, relationships. So how do we handle personal feedback? 
This could be a performance interview or performance re um, review. How do we communicate there? So um, is this working for us? How do we do it? Um, this is very interesting to simply understand what kind of communication culture uh, you have in your organizations. And um, the last aspect would be branding. So do we use branding as a mean of, of uh, really um, reaching out to audiences to make maybe um, communication marketing more attractive to people? Maybe innovation has already a branding in your, um, in, in your organization. That is something that we should analyze. Just to give you examples and all of those um, five levels. The first level, a typical example would be um, an acquisition that happened or maybe a merger. Um, something that is more common nowadays than maybe 10 or 15 years ago, changes in company strategy. So um, that is happening um, nowadays more often due to disruptions in markets or because, um, as earlier stated, maybe because our competitors have merged and we need to react to that. Um, these are typical examples. And the question that you should ask is, first of all, what channels are being used in that kind of context? Um, that is important to understand. So how do we communicate here? Second question would be, what is the tone here? Is it more objective? Is it driven by facts? Is it very creative, maybe? Um, that is an important um, part of the analysis um, process here. Third piece would be, who is issuing that? Is that happening on a, on a central level? Is it happen maybe on a department level, maybe on a, on a, um, on a business unit level? We should think about who is issuing those, um, those activities. And um, the last um, um, question here would be, how well does it work? And that's probably the most important aspect here, because it will tell you if we can use those channels for us, for, for our innovation and, um, activities, um, or not. If they don't work well, maybe we should exclude them. If they maybe don't work well in that context, then we should talk about the people that have issued those um, activities and maybe address this. So these are, are questions that you should probably more or less um, uh, uh, ask in all of those um, questions. So if we look at the second question, updates on existing enterprise programs, typical examples would be um, continuous improvement. Those programs usually change over time. Um, maybe um, if it comes to the company performance, there are changes in their programs. So this is something that um, you should look into, and the, the same questions appear here. So what channels are used, and what's the tone in, in those activities, who are they issued by, and how well does it work? Third question, examples, typical examples would be um, if it comes maybe to uh, addressing specific um, markets. So maybe this is a country, or may, maybe this is a region that we address. This is usually a tactical initiative that happens um, on a lower level of an organization. Uh, maybe there are news on a departmental or section level. So how how um, um, are those act activities executed? Same questions again. What channels are used here? What's the tone? Um, who is issuing those? And how well does it work? The fourth question. Fourth question. Typical example would uh, would be maybe um, uh, the uh, person performance interview. Maybe you constantly do brainstorming sessions with specific groups. Maybe with subject matter experts. Um, maybe generally speaking, how are meetings um, conducted, how are they summarized, how um, are the outcomes communicated. These are the typical examples, the, the same questions, um, you should ask the same questions here. Um, what channels are used, what's the tone, and um, who are they issued by, and how well, is this, um, well, uh, how well is this working. And last but not least, if it comes to branding, the question here would be really, does innovation have already a brand? Um, this is uh, often the case even if you are in the very early stage of, of, um, um, of the maturity model. So even if you have um, never done a structured approach or maybe you have done um, innovation activities in the past uh, manually, people usually have a certain um, understanding of innovation. And they, what we have seen is that they usually have this also in the context of the organization they are working with. They uh, maybe get this from organizational news or maybe how um, the company is, is, is working or how, what kind of strategy has been implemented by management, usually this is already set. And this is important to understand. So you should talk to your people, you should talk to, to your audiences, what kind of understanding they have um, if it comes to innovation. And maybe even other programs that are not directly connected to your innovation activities, maybe they have a similar approach or maybe they have a similar target. So usually um, we're talking here about change management programs. This is something that you should look into. So are they branded in a specific way? Is a specific branding even used for, for those kind of programs? 
This is interesting to understand because maybe we should um, uh, uh, take a similar approach if a certain branding in the organization is already existing if it comes to innovation. So last but not least, this is actually more or less um, uh, the uh, a summary of, of activities here now. So we have looked at um, the questions that help you to analyze what channels work, what activities work for you. I would just like to give you again some examples from, from Hype clients. So what activities work for them or are, are often used. Um, one activity that can be spread out through uh, multiple channels is simply the endorsement of the program. Um, that is something that is usually uh, also working pretty well. Um, one specific activity that is using one specific channel would be um, email invitations. So if a sponsor runs a campaign, if you invite them, the audience for this campaign, the sponsor should write this email. And, and in the best case, it even comes from uh, his or her email account. This is very ex um, effective. It makes pretty much sure that um, people are addressed um, directly and that probably people will read this email. Another activity um, that again uses multiple channels use, uh, usually is simply promoting the approach. And this is something that um, probably um, the majority of you are aware of using channels like posters or adverts on the internet. Another one would be simply viral messaging. Um, this is a little bit tricky. It depends really on your culture. It depends on your maturity. It depends if this has maybe worked in the past. Um, this is something that you probably should talk about with your communication department and with um, other sections of your organization to simply understand, has this been working in the past or not? Um, reminders um, are um, interesting. So this is again um, an activity that can be sent out through multiple channels. This could be email reminders, this could be reminders in, um, that are sent out uh, and through other channels. Um, you should look into that. Reminders usually pull people in. They usually make sure that people participate continuously, that um, they are um, uh, not only just participating when an initiative is started, but even throughout the whole initiative. Another one would be simply to communicating. It would be communicating the outcomes and even thanking participants. Again, something that can be used through multiple channels. Um, everybody should know what has happened, especially in the context of campaigns. Not only the ones that have participated, even the ones that have not participated. They should be informed about the outcomes. And they probably should also be informed about what has happened next, um, if it is the implementation of ideas, or maybe even if all, um, outcomes have already been achieved. Good, so um, basically we're coming to the end of the webinar. Let me just summarize what we have talked about today and what we have looked at. First of all, we have looked at the targets of communication um, uh, um, strategies. So to understand really what, what is really uh, the basic need behind this is, is crucial to, to understand what are the targets of communication um, uh, activities. And we've looked at them individually, at educating people, at instilling a certain belief, at informing people, and at giving feedback. All of them play a role. All of them motivate us to really focus on communication marketing. Second of all, we have looked at communication channels. Uh, we have um, looked at um, uh, categories of channels, top, um, top down or bottom up. And uh, we have looked at creating a specific communication plan and the plan that should focus more on the channels, uh, which channel to use at which which time. La uh, third step, um, we have looked at different audiences, we have looked at different time frames, and we have looked at when we should address which audience. This plays a role because um, the channels that you use and the activities that you want to run, they have to um, really um, address the audience that they are intended to address and intended to really Im an influence in the end. So um, th we have seen this sometimes that if you use the wrong channel at the wrong time for even the wrong um, audience, the channel will not have any effect and the activities that you run through the channel will more or less vaporize. They will not reach the um, impact that you're looking for. And last but not least, it is important to analyze your communication culture. So we've talked about a couple of questions, a couple of um, uh, um, um, topics that you should look at. Um, and it is important to understand also that communication plans are really unique to your organization. So if, um, if a, a certain plan works for communication A, uh, for organization A, it does not mean necessarily that the same plan works for you and, and does not even mean that the same activity or even the same channel can be used for you. So it is crucial to analyze your communication culture and to really adjust your communication marketing um, plan to your culture here. 
if you need support from our side, um, then you have a lot of um, um, options here. You can download some case studies. Michel mentioned in the beginning our innovation forums. Um, we have, um, as I said, a certain um, consulting department here that really helps our clients to create those plans. We are very happy to do that. So if you're interested in maybe more details, maybe in creating a plan for you, just let us know just what is an email. Please look also at our innovation blog uh, where we constantly highlight interesting topics. And we have even a YouTube channel. So there you will find this webinar and other webinars from my colleagues. You can always look into that. Great, so we are actually at the end of the uh, webinar and actually at the end of the time. So um, we get to the Q&A section. Um, um, let me see if we have questions that we have sent in. Um, quite so a bunch have, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, quite a bunch. So I think, I think maybe um, because we're running out of time actually, maybe we just summarize those questions, write down the answers and we will send them out to you um, afterwards. That's right. Um, as I said, I'll, uh, we have a recording of this webinar and we'll put it on YouTube and our webpage. And um, uh, well, you'll all get a follow-up email uh, with these, with a summary and the answers uh, to each of the questions. So thanks everybody for your time and I hope to be able to welcome you again soon. Have a good day everybody. Bye-bye.